It's Tuesday, so hello. It's This Is Going Well, I Think, with David Cooper. I'm David Cooper. This is the show where no one's listening. No one cares. The show where every episode's the last episode. Tony Five, our friend from England, will be joining us for whatever reason he joins us for. Quite frankly, I don't know what that reason is, but this show should be great. So let's look forward to him after this music. played my fucking theme song yet yeah i'll play it right now and now and now live from london live england, from london, england, england it's, it's foreign correspondent, foreign correspondent tony five Oh, if only people knew how it took me 15 minutes to get your fucking microphone working. Uh, let's say eight minutes, David, you fucking exaggerating runatic. Runatic? What I got? Runatic. It's more often than lunatic. David Cooper, the frequent pooper. How are we this week? How are we doing? It's been a great week. It looks like I'm going to get a new... I'm getting my first house, which is wild. <gasps> Amazing. Is that the one in Central Park? You know, are you going to go and get coffee from Central Park? No, I'm even further downtown than I am now. It's like the opposite direction. But essentially, it's Central Park in the sense that Central Park is in the same city that the house is. Okay. Are you going to be near one of them hot dog vans? I hope so. Actually, yeah, there's a lot of street vendors a few blocks away from my new house. Yeah. <sighs> I love getting salmonella from street vendors. There's a shawarma truck. There's a there's like an Indian food truck. There's a hot dog truck. Everything you want is near me. Anything that you can get to shit your pants, you've got close to you, right? Yeah, I've had a hot dog from a street vendor once since I've moved here, and I had di- I think I still have diarrhea from it. It was three years ago. Is it called Sabbath? What's Sabbath? Like a vendor name? Yeah, like you see them all over, like on on movies and stuff. You see the famous sort of street vendors selling hot dogs, and they, I'm sure it begins with an S. Sabit or Slabit or Shabit or Shabbat. There's like Franks or something. No, Nathan Nathan's is the one I'm thinking of. Nathan's. Okay, is that a famous one? That kind of everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're like green and. Are they still like a dollar? They're a little more, but they're not expensive. Yeah, and you can just hey hey, do you want a do you want a dog? I'll have the dog. Fully loaded dog, please. Two dogs with those crispy red fake bacon oh, bits. Nobody yes, knows yes. what they are, but they're not bacon. Soya. Soya or, or burnt people. Anyway, so so you're excited about a new house move. David, it's been an amazing week for me. It's been a really good week for me, too, for things that I will be able to talk about in a few weeks. But also the house, they accepted our offer. It, doesn't, it hasn't closed yet. There's a bunch of things to do. Could fall through, but at this point, it's unlikely. So I'm finally talking about it because I didn't want to jinx it. Congratulations, David. Have you spoken to the listeners about your penis operation yet? No, I'm getting my penis shrunken because it's just too, well, well, it wasn't big to begin with, but I'm getting it. No, I haven't. What is exciting for you, Tony? Tell me about your week. Mine's just a stupid house that I haven't got yet. In the month of November, there is a charity called Cancer Research, which uh, says his name on a the title. They, they do research into cancer. And I'm doing a sponsored 100 push-ups per day for the whole month of uh, November. Now, is this for the astrological sign or for the horrible disease that we hope to cure? It's for the astrological sign. I really hate Pisces and Capricorns and Aquarius, but I support wholeheartedly cancer and I do like crab meat. So, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing for them. Oh, cool. And so people can sponsor you? They did, yeah, they have. I've created a little sort of cancer-giving page and stuff, and I'll send you the link. You can put it on the uh, uh, the program, but it's just basically, a, a, yeah, it's just like a, a you-giving page and you, uh, like a fun, like a GoFundMe, but I've really reached, I, I only put down, say, $50 as my target, and I've got 145 Wow. Uh, so I've, th- yeah, nearly three times, I'm really chuffed. You're slated to cure cancer, Tony, just from a few push-ups. David, in... Uh, in my own way, David, I've cured cancer, probably cancer of like the toenail, to be fair, 
or like the anal passage, but it's still a cancer, David, and I'll take the win. Speaking of anal passage, anal gland cancer is a real thing that affects pets. Yes. And my girlfriend's parents' dog has anal gland cancer. He's on meds for it. Awful, huh? Does he have like chemotherapy or something or what What does he do? I don't think it's chemo, but I think it's medication of some variety. Might be chemo, don't know. Oh, wow. Is he going to survive? I hope so. And so does her family. I think the prognosis is all right. I don't think he's going to die tomorrow, but it's not a good thing. How would one find an, an anal fission cancer on a dog? Because he can't really tell you. No, I think, I don't know, maybe it was swollen and they took it to the doctor. Maybe it was bleeding or something. But why were they looking at his anal gland? Well, some people have different hobbies than you. Apparently, have you ever seen dogs when they pull themselves along and they're scratching their ass as they pull themselves along? I think that's one of the ways that they know because there's obviously something going on. That's not scratching, that's expressing those glands and they release a ooze that's not quite poop, but it's not quite not poop and it gets everywhere. Really? Oh, I tried that to do that once. I've tried to do a lot of things recently and one of the things I have tried to do was do that. Well, unfortunately, humans don't have anal glands. We've evolved to not have them where our common ancestors, certain monkeys still have them, but we do not for whatever reason. David, I'll give you one word, prostate. Yep. Okay, what else are you getting into? So that's what I've done this week. Uh, looking forward to come and see you and um, working on my American. Uh, got my Trump t-shirt and uh, got some white paint. So uh, I'm, I'm fucking ready, David. I'm, uh, I'm going to bring some uh, gravy, some stuffing, and uh, yeah. No, Miranda's making the stuffing. You can bring the gravy. Miranda's making the stuffing. Okay, I'll bring gravy. I mean, I'm going to bring a, a native uh, Brooklynite, I think they call them. So my friend who's coming, who you're going to get such a kick out of, and that's not <laughs> just because he's black, although that is part of it. I'm slightly racist. Okay. Uh, so you're not going to be the only black gentleman there. There's going to be three Jews... And a chicken. Two Gentiles. Four Jews, two Gentiles, and two, well, I guess four Gentiles. Not important. He has a character he does. He does a lot of radio work, and he's a DJ and stuff named Mickey Meatball, who does the exaggerated, forget about it, you know, <gasps> vaguely racist against Italian accents. Okay. And I've done radio work with him where I'm Tony Pepperoni, and he's Mickey Meatball. So you're going to love him. You and him are going to annoy everyone at this Thanksgiving, but you're going to love this guy. Okay, so I don't know anybody, so that'll be... But who else is coming? There's obviously you, Miranda. That'll be us four. And who else is coming? Haven't you got some stripper clown? Exactly. So my friend CX, or Chris, is the uh, DJ who does Mickey Meatball. We got Miranda, we got me, we got you. That's four people. My stripper clown friend, Allegra. Brilliant. My random... There's always a wild card. My random wild card friend, Yossi. And brother? Uh, no, he's not a brother. He's, he's No, your brother. No, yeah, my brother. <laughs> Right, idiot. Right, <laughs> fucking hell, of course he's not your brother. Right, anybody else? Have we got any more people coming? And possibly my friend Jim, possibly my friend Brandon, possibly my friend Maya. Oh, can it not be such a cock fest? Can you at least bring some women for fuck's sake? Maya's a woman. Oh, okay, cool. All right, then she'll do. Brilliant. It's going to be a good uh, a good time, and I think we'll, t we'll have lots to talk about. I'm sure we'll record something that day. I think it should be live-streamed on pay-per-view. Yeah, pay <laughs> but, but nobody pays nobody to pays. view it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a free pay-per-view, basically, that we put on like a... a no, no, a no. It's paid pay-per-view. you got to pay $20, but we'll have the number of paid viewers on a screen, and it will just say zero the whole time. Or we put it on a free channel and you pay not to watch it. <laughs> How amazing would that be? It's a no pay to view. We pay people to break into people's homes, tie them up, turn on their televisions. Correct. And if they send us money, then we'll turn it off. And a happy Thanksgiving, one and all. <laughs> That's what the pilgrims wanted, David. You went to a comedy show tonight? What'd you see? I did. I saw a guy called Mo Gilligan. Um, I don't know whether you know him. He's a very, very funny uh, British comedian. Started off on YouTube and absolutely just blew up. He's um, observational. Uh, his name's Mo Gilligan. Um, and he was doing a, a work in progress tour because he's doing a world tour next year. Um, and he was just doing some work in progress. And, you know, David, I... I got. I, I always have this thing, and you kind of stir it in me. I think, oh, I'd love to do stand up. I'd love to get on the stage and have that feeling of just people laughing and making people happy, and then the confidence, the bottom falls out of that. Like I lose my feet, and I'm like, I will never do that. But whilst I'm in that moment, I can sit there and think, I could do this, and I have the jokes, and I could interact with the audience, and it would be great, and it would be fantastic. But I just don't think I could do it. So, so you're looking at this all wrong. 
completely wrong. I mean, your reasons for wanting to do it, you'd love to make people laugh, you'd love to be able to do it, that's all fine. But the idea of doing it, you've got all wrong. As in? The way you should look at it is, imagine you're at a museum and they're doing a renovate, and it doesn't have to be a museum, any building, and they're doing a renovation, and it's a very complicated- Gangbang, a, a, a swingers club. No, no, you're just watching some construction, some very high-end construction, and you're watching a- Anal sex. <laughs> I hate you. Carry on. I mean, if you want to do stand-up or not, you have to internalize what I'm about to say. Okay, hit me. You're watching a renovation happen, and you're watching a very complicated drywall panel be installed. And so you're watching a master drywaller install it very well, exactly, with zero clearance, like perfect installation of a panel. And you look at it and you think, that is a master craftsman. Or you're at a woodworking shop and you're watching a guy or girl build a chair and you're watching them plane the wood, sand the wood, fit it in, have the perfect dowel, you know, do wonderful cuts. They get the nail in there with one hit. They set the glue perfectly. And you and you look at the result and you're like, that is a, a wonderfully built chair. When you look at stand-up, you should look at it like that. It is a craft and the only way you get there is from doing it and doing it repeatedly and learning and getting better and doing years of it. That's the only way you're gonna be great at it. So if the idea is you get up on stage with the first little thing that you write and then you get totally decimated because no one laughs and then you never try it again, or you get on stage after writing something and you're a genius and you're a natural, you're looking at it all wrong. No one builds their first chair and they're a natural. Maybe it's a little better than the other person. I mean, there might be people who are more uh, likely to become great carpenters because their starting point is a little bit better, but it's ultimately, if you work hard enough at this craft, you can become great. Now, if you want to be a great violinist, but you're fucking tone deaf, it's never going to happen. Yeah, if you want to be a stand-up and you're just not funny, then that's fair enough. But you are funny, and I know stand-ups who, in person, do not get jokes. They are the least funny people you've ever met. God. And then when they get on stage, they're great. And then I know people who suck at stand-up and will always suck at stand-up, and they're fucking hilarious when you're around them. Uh, so it's a really a craft. If you want to become great on it, at it, you have to commit to doing it. That's it. Yeah, I, 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 that's so. What you said is just so true, and I think I, I think that fear of of just maybe like you said, the fear of failing on stage, you know, completely bombing on stage and crushing, I think would just crush me, um, because naturally when I'm around people, people do laugh, and I'm, I'm quite happy. I get off on it, and I can see, you know, I was looking at this guy just having a whole audience just in the palm of their hand, like you, like you know, you say, and just seeing the joy that it would bring you know i was just kind of sitting there watching him thinking god I, i'd love that but you know maybe in a different life i guess um i don't think i have the time you could start lots of people start at your age you don't have to start at 15 you know it's not yeah well speaking of violin that's one of those things where you have to start young because you need the time I mean, is it too late to be an astronaut probably in it i think you could start being an astronaut later in life in 10 years you could be an astronaut i don't know but you talk about bombing and it crushing you as part of learning the craft. Yes, it is crushing. But the next day you get back up. Like you don't have time to really dwell on it. Yeah, I get it. You know, or even later in the evening, you get back up. I have friends who do three shows a night. They do maybe one paid show and two open mics. Jesus. Every night, five days a week. It's a real craft. You really have to work at it. Yeah, and I, I and it, it is. I've I sound sound silly, but I've read books on the craft. You know, um, comedians that have kind of you know giving their hints and tips. And and some people have talked about the science of of comedy. You know, they've gone back you know hundreds and whatever years, and they've talked about how you know jesters first did it in court, and you know what was the reasons for it, and how comics have developed. Um, over the years and I found like you said the craft fascinating um, stand-up comedy when I was growing up was kind of the the, the stage of of middle-aged white men apart from the very famous like Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor um, the American comics I, I wouldn't say there was any sort of huge black British comics apart from one guy who was so vanilla um you know he just it, it was just he was appealing to sort of uh, you know middle-aged white guys to be fair so uh, he was just a black guy just acting like a white guy but now it's so it's so uber cool they're like the rock stars these guys fill stadiums and they're on every show and they it's just 
it's amazing and I sometimes live in not regret but I think god if I had I started when I first thought it then maybe but then you're quite inspirational because I know you did it before we met I started doing radio in 2015 yeah eight years ago yeah but you're still shit at it though that's the problem <laughs> and, and 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 that's so you're like a cautionary tale in that one nobody listens and two you still suck so you know it's you know there are two negatives to that story david and uh, you've got one of them well one day you could be a huge black british comedian <laughs> all you have to do is put on weight you're not a skinny guy but you you're just sort of like slightly above average size at this point yeah yeah, I mean, we could try. So, so apart from the house, which you're looking forward to and cannot be, uh, cannot be cursed now, that's going to be a good thing. Is it going to be a few months for it to uh, settle in and kick down? Yeah, closing will take two months and, and I have to be approved by the building. So it's like a whole thing, but it's likely to happen, likely to happen. Are you going to be interviewed by the people? Yeah. <gasps> will you have to have a shower? I will have to have a shower. Fair enough. How's the view? Has it got a nice view? Yeah, it's okay. The view from my building right now is a little better, but it's good. It's got lots of light and, and yeah. And it's high ceilings and stuff like that. Is, is, is it what I would imagine as a typical New York sort of flat would be? Because like you see them on like, I think the first ever New York flat I saw, and it's going to be really quiche and very narrow minded, is Big. Do you remember Tom Hanks in the movie Big? He buys this huge flat and he has a trampoline in it and a pinball machine in it and all sorts. And it's beautiful. And it's like a huge location. Um, and I always think, and then obviously the next one is like the friend's apartment. So like where Monica and Rachel live and it's it's completely, you know, uh, just fantasy world that people can afford to live in these places. I'm looking at a photo of the movie Big. It's definitely not that large, but it is a loft. It's like, you know, not, you know, it's not thousands of square feet, this thing. But uh, yeah, it's it's a small loft in uh, in New York. Cool. So that that's going to be your your pad, your your permanent location, David. Your home, amazing. Is it? Is this your first home, by the way? Yeah, first home. I'm so glad. I'm so excited to not have to give a fucking landlord money. That money is going into my own. Like the money that I spend to live every month is an investment. It's no longer someone else's fucking investment. And and property prices like bricks and mortar will generally never go down, right? It's always a good investment to have, I guess. And you've got a little Tony annex as well. I've heard a little Tony annex right at the side where you can like, put me on and when I can stay there and live there and bring women back. It's a one bedroom for two reasons. A, I didn't want to spend the money for two. But B, when you have a two bedroom in New York, people stay with you. <laughs> but there's a little sort of vestibule. It's maybe six by eight feet. And I'm going to put a little day bed in there. And one of those kind of like Japanese paper walls that I can just put in storage. So racist. It'll turn into a two bedroom if I need it to. So it, it'll be decent accommodation for another person for like a week. It won't be decent for another person for a month. But, you know, it's New York. If, if I wanted a fucking second bedroom, I wouldn't live in New York. Sorry, just part of the meeting. It's an Asian American. I think they call it uh, silk panel. But apart from that, sounds fantastic. Should be. Really good. What would you like as your uh, as your moving in present, David? Come on. Just you, baby. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, I was gonna probably put some of my hair somewhere. Just like I believe that in the future people will be able to clone me. So when they come, like maybe twenty sixty or something, and they look at your flat and there'll be like little pieces of my pubic hair in places in your flat and they can recreate me. Wouldn't that be amazing? It will be. Have you seen the George Costanza like on the couch? Uh, you know, you know the picture? No. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. It's from the episode where Elaine's nipple gets photographed, I think. Is he naked? He's not naked, but he's in his underwear. Oh, I have seen this. Yes. I want a print of you like that. I can do that for you. Would you put it on your wall though? Yeah, I want it life size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like full on HD life size on your wall with a manly chest hair. I would do that for you. Yeah, fuck it. I would do that for you. I would do anything for you, to be fair. So that's fair enough. So how? So this week, so obviously how stuff's out of the way, um, Trump is getting uh, indicted. We won't talk about all the miserable stuff going on in the world because that's tragic. Well, I love that Trump was in the courtroom and he's on the stand and he's like, can I read from a piece of paper? And the judge is like, no, you can't read from a piece of paper. A piece of paper is evidence. If you want to read from a fucking piece of paper, you need to introduce it like normal evidence. You have to disclose it to the other side. The other, you know, you can't just bring evidence and, you Put know. Put it out of your pocket. Yeah. You can't. 
<laughs> and then he's like, it's discrimination. I'm like, this guy's been in so many lawsuits. He knows the rules. It's insane. Like, that's that's not even law school stuff. That's like one law class in, in university level stuff. It's so funny to me that he tried to introduce evidence on the stand and then was appalled when he could not. It's like a mass murderer saying, look, I've got a knife in my pocket that I use. Could I just show you guys this <laughs> knife with the blood on it? You, is that okay? And yeah, he's a very strange man. But not only that, it, it, oh, I mean, again, in the UK news, I don't know how much it is in the US, but they're saying he has a genuine chance at, at being president again. You you, you always say no, and you like you now even shaking your head. No, I say I don't know. I don't know why you say this. I say I'm not sure. That's my position. Okay, I just find... If it did happen, and he, I would have so much more less respect for the US than I already do. And I just would think, why? But but people are saying that he's just, he speaks very well and he speaks to a certain demographic of Americans that are going to vote for him, which is phenomenal. And everyone at Thanksgiving will be of that demographic, Tony. That would be amazing. Bring some Trump supporters. That would be fantastic. I don't know too many. And the ones I do know, I know like one or two and they don't live in New York. And certainly they wouldn't be coming to Thanksgiving. Wow. I mean, it is. It is true. Do you do the whole thing where you, we go around the table and say, I'm thankful for and you're thankful? We can. Do you want to? I want to do the whole, whatever the tradition is, um, email David and David will forward to me. I want to know what the proper traditional Thanksgiving is because I'm flying all the way for that. I want the full on. Do you wear hats? No, it's not like Christmas with the hats. Okay. What's the thanks? What do you know as a Thanksgiving? I know you've had it. And I know you make duck, confit duck. Um, I don't know whether the pilgrims had that, but whatever. Um, but should we wear like outfits, like pilgrim outfits or something? Or Confit duck's a very old recipe. They used to cook it in oil like that because it would preserve it because they didn't have proper refrigeration. So it is actually an old recipe. Now, were pilgrims doing it? Probably not. But it's not like a fancy new thing. Duck confit is a very, very old recipe. Oh, that's nice. And you're making potatoes? Yeah, mash. Ma not roast potatoes? I'll make roast and mash if you want. Roast potatoes, thank you. And vegetables? Yeah, veggies. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very nice. Do you have Yorkshire puddings? I don't even know what that is. I mean, I know what it is. I've heard people say it, but I couldn't picture it. Okay, so I'll, maybe I'll bring some Yorkshire pudding mix as well. They don't take very long. You've just got to have the little uh, cake dishes that you put them in, the small little pans, you know, like... Like cupcake dishes? Cupcake dishes, yeah, and you have hot oil, and we can put them in, and we can... I, I'll make that. I'll make some Yorkshire puddings. Well, there's some politics around oven, you know, like the duck's in the oven, the stuffing's in the oven, so anything stovetop is probably a better choice, but we'll figure it out. Tony, on that note, we should probably end this. I mean, this is a fantastic show. We've spoken about food that I'm going to eat and, um, and my cure for cancer, David. I mean, if this is not the most fantastic podcast available known to man... I don't know what is. Fuck Joe Rogan. Fuck bro Jogan. I mean, it's a podcast. I can tell you that much, but that's about it. It is. It was good. David, always a pleasure. Never a chore, my friend.